This is the uh, Real War Gamer. Uh, this is uh, by the Edge of the Sword series, Dauphin and the Sword uh, edition, Louis the Eleventh, Volume One, and the battle here fought on July sixteenth, fourteen sixty-five, between uh, Louis the Eleventh and Charles. Um, yeah, Charles of Charolais. Okay. Uh, fatigue. As a result of melee or fire, units may become fatigued. There are basically two levels of fatigue. There's fresh, which is the front of the counter, and there's fatigued, the back of the counter. Uh, the, uh, the effects of fatigue are shown on the, uh, are shown on the, um, the counter directly, which is nice. Fatigued units have neither, uh, I'm sorry, fatigued units that have neither moved, fired, or nor engaged in melee and have not been the target of fire or melee can be turned over to their normal side. That's during the rally phase. Um, let's see. If a charging unit was not already fatigued at the start and if the initial charge results in an, in an advance after melee, Without fatigue for the attacking unit, the latter must execute an elan. It must advance into the vacated hex while changing facing by one hex side if desired and execute a new charge against the unit currently in its central front hex. Oh, nice. I don't remember this from before. So, so there is the concept of pursuit, which is not that unusual. Then there's elan which I guess a lawn would be like a, a maybe a breakthrough attack, a subsequent attack, and dispersion. All right. If the result of the lawn involves a new advance after melee without fatigue for the attacking unit, the latter can choose to execute a dispersion. It must advance again into the vacated hex while changing facing by one hex height if desired, and then it may choose to execute a new charge against the unit currently in its central front hex. So you can really have a breakthrough here is what I'm hearing. Whatever the result of its charge, the attacking unit which, unit which executed the dispersion suffers a fatigue result in addition to the results of the charge and the pursuit ends. A lawn and dispersion are completely separate melees with their own potential defensive and offensive fire phases. Oh, okay. All right, um, fatigue. Um, the counter is turned over to indicate to indicate fatigue, and this uh, well, a fatigued unit which suffers a further fatigue result remains fatigued with no additional effect. So there's only one level of effects for fatigue, basically. Effects of fatigue. The effects of fatigue are indicated by the new characteristics of the, of the unit, which are printed on the back of its counter. Um, The status of a unit with respect to fatigue, either fresh or fatigued, does not affect its level of disorganization, which is valiant, discouraged, or routed. Okay. All right. I think that's about it for fatigue. Yeah. Okay. So that's fatigue. Uh, I think it's going to be... Uh, I think we're going to move on to another uh, command rating 1 leader under uh, Charles for for a, uh, I don't know if they call it activation, but for movement in combat. All right, so again, I don't think there's any such thing as a pass, which means I believe that when it comes up to a leader's, um, which by the way, I never did like pass. Um, pass might work at a particular scale and scope, but I don't think pass works at this kind of battle uh, scale and scope. So anyways, the next, um, this is the, yeah, this is the one, um, command rating one leader under Charles here. So this guy, let's see if his name is, oh, yikes. Well, this guy's next, right there. Um, he's got some archers and artillery. He's got archers and artillery. Archers, archers, so he's, 
He's kind of, yeah, he's in, he's in command of the, the artillery formation. Um, well, yeah, I guess they're, they're going to do their combat. Um, so, game markers. Um, it's nice that the the play aid is one sheet, but unfortunately, I I still don't see the sequence of play on here. I, mean, I understand maybe somebody at some point thought that wasn't, I guess, necessary, but um, I don't I don't think that I mean the command. I'm sorry, the sequence of play is made up of five phases, and there are multiple steps for certainly at least some of the. Okay, not all, but some of the um, phases, so I don't really understand why um, the uh, sequence of play was not made more handy. Um, but let's do this. This is movement in combat phase D. First, there's movement of the leader. I'm not sure. No, I don't think anybody's going to move. Um... So what is the movement capability of these? Are okay. The artillery do have two uh, movement point movement allowance. Hmm. Well, no movement. Um, or hmm. Or maybe I do move forward. So our back's not to the stream there. Nah. Now we'll just, okay, we'll stay put. D, D1 is movement of leader and in-command units. D2 is ranged fire by units of the active player. This is certainly now. So, um, so my first question, of course, is can this archer unit fire past its friendly unit there to hit the, um, Let's see the mounted men at arms there. So a line of sight slash line of fire that goes along a hex side. I have no idea. I don't remember what we do here for that. So um, this is not. Eh. Um, movement command. Uh, fires. Um, line of so there is line of sight. Um, let's see. Checked. Standard. 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 Fire into blocking train, but not through. Um, oh, yeah, they're at the same level. There's not a level issue. Okay, there we, here we go. A hex side of a hex containing either a blocking terrain or a unit does not in itself block a line of sight. I'm glad. I, I, I don't care for games that actually have hex sides blocked in this in this manner anyways, so I'm glad that that's not the case. So fire procedure, select the target unit, so this, oh, oh wait a minute, I guess the other thing I need to figure out is if I want both of these archer units to fire at them, do I need to, com do, must I combine? Um, fire is never obligatory, only those units with a fire capability and not routed can fire through their front hexes, well the targets clearly to the front for both units. Um, a unit can be the target of only one fire attack per activation. Different types of units are not allowed to combine their fire against the same target, but, but that's different types of units. Those are both archer units. So, so can I combine or not? Fi oh, fire, oh. Oh wait, this depends on what phase. So fire in phase D4. Which is what we're doing now. Fire is not allowed unless fire is adjacent. Okay, never mind. 
this isn't firing at all because it's not adjacent. So it is only the matter of this archer unit. So we will do his fire right now. Select the target unit. Um, select units which will fire at that target as possible. It is possible to combine fire by units of the same type activated at the same time. But here, um, so there is an archer unit underneath is an artillery unit, but these are two different types, that, so they're not going to combine. So the archer unit is going to fire at the adjacent yeah, so only adjacent. I should have paid attention to that. Um, um, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, this is D2. Never mind. I'm sorry, I was reading about D4. And D4, D2 refers to the sequence of play, which I wish I could show better if it was on its separate display. No, this is D2. So fire in phases B and D2. Fire is not allowed if the fire... Fire is not allowed if the fire is adjacent to any enemy unit or to its target. Okay, so this is D2. This is ranged fire by units of the active player that have the ability fire and are not adjacent to an enemy unit. There we go. So, reverse, it's this unit firing here because it's not adjacent. Alright, so we're on track now. Select the unit, so it will fire. Um, use the range of the unit, so it's a range of two hexes. Uh, check the line of sight, I did, I did that. So line of sight along that hex side is just fine. Roll 1d10, uh, 0. A zero is very bad. As a matter of fact, I don't think a zero can hit at all, actually. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at the fire table here, right there. So this is Archer, two hexes. He needs a six or better, modified six or better, to discourage the target unit, or an eight or better to route the unit, the target. Um, these modifiers are not going to help, not going to get us up to six. But they are, you know, terrain, which is not a factor here. The strength of the unit itself, it's a four strength unit, which makes it just average, no modifier. Um, targets dismounted or dismounted men at arms. Uh, moved in the current activation. Oh, this is where I'm reading. These are all the modifiers here. But no, none of. Actually, I'm not sure any of these apply. All right, so zero is not what, what we want. We want a high number. Um, so that's that. Um, um, yeah, other units are block. Other units are blocking terrain. Uh, some types of terrain and other units, friendly or enemy, do block line of sight. So these guys can't fire through here. Um, what do we got? We have here though. They should be able to fire distant here, but I think we're gonna have to roll well here. Set him aside. So first the archers. So these archers can combine three hex. Let's do that. So. Oh, that's how we get the modifiers. I was wondering about that. So let's do that. These two archer units are going to fire at that mounted men at arms target. At, again, a range of three. One, two, three. Um, I was wondering how to get the what we do so we combine the strength. So four strength, four strength um, uh, archer units for a total of eight. So here we go. Well, I'll Roll the die first. Oh, man. Three. Let's see if we can get to... What we need is... Uh, seven. So we have three... Um, plus two a firing unit or combined total of firing units has more than eight strength points. Oh, more than eight. So we just have more than four for plus one. Ah, we're not going to get there. Okay. We're not going to get there. Three was just too low. Now, finally, we do have. I, I think the artillery. I think the artillery can fire. Uh, maybe I should double check. 
one more time. Can the artillery fire in this step of this phase? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Well, I don't see where it says that they can't, so it's just, um... I think they can. So now we'll now we'll move your archer units. Are the two artillery units there? Um Okay, yeah, it says as a result some units may be able to fire several times in a turn. That's what I was wondering. That is good. That's what I was looking for. Um, but there's something... Um, hmm... So isn't that interesting? Again, to repeat, a unit can only be a target. A unit can be the target of only one fire attack per activation. Different types of units are not allowed to combine their fire against the same target. So because the artillery units, I mean, because the archer units fired at this unit, the artillery can't do the same thing. That seems a bit strange. It does. Um, four. Well, all right. So. Put these guys back. So this artillery unit will fire past that to this unit four X's away. So the bottom line is I need to roll really high. If I roll low, it won't even, it won't even be, well, six, six is, six is borderline. Um, oh, actually, actually I do need to compute this. All right, so this is artillery at a 4x range, 6 or better, is enough to discourage the target, so modifiers. It's a 3 strength artillery unit, so that, oh, that's minus 1. Oh no. Oh wait, does not apply to artillery. Okay, so that does not apply to artillery. Um, target yeah, dismounted, dismounted, no, they're, they're mounted men at arms. Um, firing unit, mounted, discouraged, no, okay. So actually we discouraged, discouraged them. Um, okay. There. That's fire for this, uh, for this um, banner. All right. Um, that's uh, that's D two D three is declaration of melees. Um, obviously, the archers and artillery who are adjacent to the mounted men at arms there are not going to melee. If that's even allowed, it's hard to imagine that that's even allowed. But uh, D four resolution of melees no. Movement by non-commanded units. We don't have any of those. Okay, so that is this banner. I grab a um, act activated marker and mark him is done. Now we're going to go to the um, command rating two units, which I guess I'll. Oh wait, there's another. Oh no, wait. When I look quickly, I sometimes, uh, by the way, can. If I do it too quickly, I confuse the bonus with the command rating. Um, and you'll see in some cases there's a big difference between the two. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go to the command rating 2. So we have one command rating 2 here. Um, three, three. Oh, here's another 2. So Charles, 
has two command rating two leaders and Louis has um oh himself actually so since both sides have command rating two uh units I think we go again we go with the side with the higher or, or the lower bonus so that's uh that's Louis the eleventh uh, there.